Hello everyone. This is my lower ball joint for a Hyundai Santa Fe 2003. And uh, basically what I'm gonna do today is modify it and put a Zerk um, grease fitting on the bottom of it. But uh, prior to doing that and showing you how to do that, uh, I wanted to show you why I'm doing it. Now when I got this uh, lower ball joint, I got it at a fairly reasonable price. I'll put, I'll put the link to all the stuff I used here on uh, the video description. but. Uh, I like this one for a couple reasons. Number one, it had a, a, a clip, uh, a, a, basically a metal uh, sir clip at the top and also a metal clip at the bottom of the boot, which uh, I basically thought that was a good thing. Uh, most of them don't have this. Uh, they, have an, they only have, a, a, if you're lucky, uh, a metal clip on the bottom. So I like this, uh, this particular uh, lower ball joint for the fact that it had these two things on it on the boot uh, as well if you look on the bottom you see right there it has that dimple on the bottom there or, or a bump uh, where it basically allows you to drill it out and put that uh, zerk uh, fitting on there like so and that's what I'm going to do but uh, Reason for doing that is I want to be able to lubricate the actual ball joint without taking it off the car once I install it and uh, When I got it, I, you know, it's so stiff now I understand that it's a brand new part and probably that's normal that it's that stiff But I was concerned that you know I'm saying okay Well, has it even been lubricated yet or you know, or is it one of those quote-unquote permanently lubricated parts and uh, basically, which means it's lubricated at the factory and then you're done. It, it just works until you, the lubrication fails and then the part fails. So uh, I was curious to see if it was lubricated or not. And I have no way of finding out if it's lubricated below the bulb down here until I drill it out. And then once I drill it out, I can, I can you know, use a wire or something, fish, it, fish around the bottom and see if there's any uh, uh, grease in there. But on the top, I just removed the boot on my other one. There's two on my car. And here you can see a little mark, a little scratch that I used here. Uh, I had my, my um, vice grips on this thing and I was trying to get to, to move the head on it and it was still so stiff I just barely moved it. So I was really concerned about is this thing even lubricated. So I took the boot off of it and here's what it looks like without the boot. So there was obviously grease there, right? Okay, that's a good sign. We got grease, that's good. Now, I don't know what that, yeah, that's just still grease. And uh, basically, this is what you got when, when I took off the, the boot. And, and it is grease and that's good. But, let me show you something. I'll put that down like so. And I'm gonna zoom in on it so you can see what I found. You'll see here on this edge, let me get my little screwdriver. You'll see here where the metal from the uh, post it goes down and then turns into the ball and then fits into the housing for the uh, ball joint. You see it's dry all the way down to there, all the way where it meets the outer edge of the casing here. What that tells me is that all they did for lubrication here is just sl slather on some grease on the top and uh, basically said, hey, that's it, it's lubricated. So they're hoping that, well, they're, they're I think from what I can see, what they're hoping is that the grease will eventually work its way down to the bottom and lubricate the ball through gravity. Now, you know, though probably will work just fine. Um, that's not for me. I want to be able to, to apply grease to the whole ball and from uh, around the entire thing and from the bottom. And in order to do that, I'm going to tap this bottom piece here, which has got lots of metal, as you can see. I'm going to tap that and uh, thread it and then put the Zerk fitting right on the end like so. So, um, I've got a, a drill press to do all this stuff with, which makes my life, you know, much simpler um, than doing it by hand, but it's totally doable by hand. And uh, I'll show you what I mean. Um, let me zoom back out. I've got a piece of flat steel here that I've uh, already uh, drilled out using some hand tools and uh, actually tapped it and, and uh, put the threads into it. And it works basically perfectly, like so. And I'm gonna be using the 45 degree uh, uh, angled Zerk fitting because basically when this is inside the car, when the ball joint's inside the car, the wheel comes underneath it here. 
and if I put it on, if I put a 90 or sorry a straight end 180 or straight end uh, Zerk fitting, my uh, grease uh, gun would not be able to purchase on the on the by by doing it at a 90 degree, then I get the ability to actually pump grease into the ball joint while the wheel is still on the car, so I don't have to take the, the wheel off to to uh, lubricate it. Well, that's why I'm using this now. A um, couple things. First thing, yes a hand drill for this and if you know how to use it you what you know how to hand drill best thing to do is to start with a center punch and basically create a punch a hole on it and uh, like let me just do it right now okay this is a uh, automatic center punch it's, it's it basically uh, loads you press down on it and it actually pounds a hole into the metal um, I don't know if you can see it or not let me zoom in There it is right there. And I'll do it again. So basically. And it just punches a little hole into the metal. Now you you should always use a center punch even if you don't have an automatic one. A standard one will do prior to drilling anything because A, it helps to guide the drill bit and keeps it from skating on your metal. So it stays exactly where you want it to uh, start drilling from. And a second, it protects uh, the, yeah, actually lengthens, lengthens the life of your um, drill bits. So definitely use a center punch. Then after that, basically what you're gonna do, if you're using this kind of Zerk fitting, and this Zerk fitting, just so you know, is a quarter inch, 28 pitch um, Zerk fitting. So it's uh, SAE, I believe, yeah. And what you need to do is drill out a hole, uh, with uh, basically to the size of 730 seconds. This is a 730 seconds drill bit here. And then tap the hole with uh, basically uh, put threads into the hole and finish it off. Now I've done it, that here, as you can see a couple times and you can see the threads inside there and they work perfectly, okay? So that's part of what you need to do. Uh, and when you're drilling holes, if you're drilling this by hand, start with a very th a small drill and I will too on my drill press just to figure out how deep I need to go and then work your way uh, bigger and bigger and bigger until you actually get through uh, to the size you need which is 730 seconds here that's what I'm gonna be using and um, the other thing too is you're gonna need tap and die tools if you don't have a drill press I'm gonna be using my drill press as the tap and drive to uh, tap and uh, the die tool for uh, making the threads. I'm going to be using the uh, drill press for my tap and die uh, tool. But um, if you you know if you have access to just a cheap set, then uh, really what you need is a set of uh, taps as we have here. And these are well, let me close these up in a second so I can zoom in on it. I bought these on Amazon, they're from Irwin. And uh, they're a three-piece tap set that have a taper, a plug, and a bottom um, tap. Now the reason why it's important uh, to for me to have these three, and probably for you as well, is that we're gonna be drilling a, a blind hole into the bottom of this. We don't know how deep it goes, and uh, therefore we need a tap that can do that. And the, the taper uh, tap is good for starting the hole, the plug tap is good for uh, you know continuing the hole, but the bottom uh, set is actually uh, made for it's basically a bottoming tap, and it's made for with just enough chamfer to the top edges of the actual tap. And I'll show you the differences here. Let me zoom in. All right, you'll see that the uh, taper has seven to ten threads of chamfer on the top, so Basically, if you look at it, it's, it's got a taper to the top of it that's, that's very gradual. So basically, what it's good for is for starting a thread and then if you wanted to finish with it, you'd have to go all the way, way through the piece to the end. So yeah, it'll work good for a piece you can go right through like this uh, flat steel I have here. But on this ball joint, you can't go right through it. You can only get to, get to the bottom of the hole and that's it. So if you used 
this bit for it, then you wouldn't get thread all the way down to the, from, from, you wouldn't get very much thread from here to here into the hole. So like I said, this is good for starting the thread, but that's not much uh, good for finishing it on the, at this purpose. Now this is the, the uh, plug uh, tap. And as you can see, it's got a lot less chamfer to it. It's got, uh, I believe, okay, so a plug tap is, is got a, with the chamfer over four threads. It's mostly used, uh, widely used through holes where there is sufficient room at the bottom uh, in a blind hole. Well, we don't know how much room there is in a blind hole, but basically uh, this much of your hole will not have uh, any thread in it if you get if this stops somewhere so the one you want to use is a bottom tap and the bottom tap only has um, actually uh, one or two one uh, to two half threads uh, before the chamfer is done so basically it will give you thread almost to the very very bottom of a hole that you have drilled out so that's what I want and I want th lots of thread on my uh, zerk fitting so that it actually has good hold on on the actual metal okay so I, I don't hopefully that's not too technical but basically uh, I'm gonna start the hole I'm gonna start the tap with uh, one of these two probably this one and then go to this one till it hits bottom and then I'm gonna use this one all the way till it hits bottom because that'll give me the maximum amount of thread that's the bottom tap so if you're confident and uh, you know Again, you only have one, then use the bottom, right? But if you use one of these taper ones, I don't think you're gonna get uh, it's like a, a taper or a plug uh, thread. You're not gonna get enough thread on that uh, hole to actually uh, get it to go or get it to grip. Now this, I don't know, may be too deep for the hole too. I'm gonna have to measure how deep it is too, but uh, that's part of the process once I start it. So it may be a little de deep here so I can always just cut some of this thread off and not make it as deep. Because uh, I don't want it to go in and hit the ball and restrict the movement of the ball once it's in there, all right? Or smash it or scratch it, whatever. So I need to do a, a preliminary hole on that and figure out how deep I can go on this ball joint, which I will put in the video description. Again, I'll put a link to all this stuff in the video description. So our, our basic procedure at this point will be to uh, drill the, the metal, um, tap the metal and then put the zerk fitting on the metal, all right, on the ball joint. And then we're gonna uh, pump it up full of lube and see what happens. All right, I've actually got the center pump, a hole in the center of that bottom cap on that ball joint. And I wanted to stress that, you know, you can get these ball joints with the zerk fitting, the grease fitting on the bottom of them. Uh, but they're not cheap. I saw, I think the cheapest one I saw were uh, $36 a piece where the actual ball joint that I'm using here was I think $14 each. And uh, the Zerg fittings are very economical. They're a couple dollars for a few of them uh, at your local auto shop. And uh, I will put a, a link to them in the, uh, for Amazon in the uh, video description. But there you can see my uh, punch hole there on the center. I'm gonna use a very, very uh, thin diameter uh, uh, drill and my drill press to uh, punch a hole well to drill a hole through the center to uh, the actual ball then I'm going to measure and see how deep that is so that in my successive drilling I don't go too deep and damage the uh, ball I don't want to drill into the ball I want to be real careful about that okay I've got my uh, ball joint uh, secure in my vise for my uh, drill press and I've got the drill uh, it's a 1 16th that's what I'm starting with a very small drill uh, uh, centered up on the punch so uh, we're just going to drill through there all right we seem to have drilled right through without much of an issue um, seems to be a lot of distance there on that drill bit but uh, I'm going to measure it, the, the the distance there is there between uh, the ball and where it actually hit. And uh, I think it's uh, about, I'd say a, a good quarter inch, if not more. Um, but regardless, uh, I'm just gonna use a piece of wire to see how far down that uh, goes till, it, till I hit the ball. And then I'll make sure that on the, on the uh, next uh, drills that I use, 
or drill bits that I use, I don't go that deep. And uh, I didn't go deep enough to hit it anyway. You can actually feel it release when you actually go through the actual metal. And there it is, a nice hole that we have. Um, and uh, now, the next, what, you know, after I find out how deep this is or how uh, far to go before you hit the ball, uh, I'm just gonna increase the uh, diameter of the drill bit until I hit, hit the 730 seconds uh, bit that I want to use as a final uh, bore drill. I measured the depth of that hole and with my handy measuring tool here, the paper clip, and I found that it was 13, uh, 30 seconds, or if we keep going through the numbers, 10.4 uh, 10 mil 10 millimeters uh, and 0 0.4095 inches. Now why is that significant? Because the Zerk fitting has to be able to fit in there and it is more than capable of fitting in that hole. Uh, from the surface to the ball, when I make contact with the, with the ball joint itself, I have a lot of clearance there, as you can see. Uh, if I can hold it steady, hold on. There we go. Uh, a lot of clearance there for that fitting, so I can uh, safely and uh, you know confidently screw that down all the way to the bottom without hitting the ball. So that's why you want to measure that out and make sure that you're, you've got clearance, number one. Number two also tells me how deep I can drill into this as I expand the hole without hitting the ball. I don't want to mar the ball or put a hole in the ball, in the, uh, uh, ball joint at all uh, or the top of the ball uh, when I'm doing this drilling. So I'm just going to progressively go through the drills uh, and widen this hole until I'm at uh, 730 seconds. That was my last uh, drill bit, that's the 730 seconds. So that hole's as wide as it needs to be at this point uh, to be tapped in. Uh, I used some charts I found on the internet to tell you which size uh, hole to drill for which size tap. And it's a quarter inch uh, 28, so the 730 seconds was the right one on several different charts and, uh, that I checked. I'll put a link to those charts on the video description. Uh, but I did find something that was good news uh, when I Opened it up, I did find uh, some grease on that uh, uh, pin or on the, on the bits as well. So there was grease on the other side of the ball. Uh, how much, I don't know, but it was actually lubricated on both sides. So that's a good thing. Uh, next thing I'm gonna do is tap this out. And I am gonna use the drill bit to tap it. And I'll show you how I'm gonna do that. Uh, understand that the power will be off to the drill bit, sorry, to the drill uh, or the drill press. I will be operating it by hand and the uh, reason for that is that the drill press is very, very steady and sure to give me a straight, straight uh, uh, plunge into that hole, exactly the same angle that I'm using right now on that drill bit. So next I'm gonna mount my uh, tap, the proper tap, and uh, go into it. Now I said that I was using a bottom tap. Uh, seeing how much space I have on the other side of that uh, thread, I could just use a regular taper tap and get away with it. Now I didn't know that prior to taking it apart, so uh, I will probably use the bottom uh, tap at, at the very end of uh, the threading process to get uh, right to the get the threads right to the bottom of this uh, plate here. And here's more proof of there being grease. Every one of my bits that I took out once I, I got through the case uh, has grease on the tip.
I've got my uh, quarter inch 28 pitch uh, taper tap in there right now and I'm going to use it to start the thread and probably go through the actual uh, top cover on that ball joint. Now I'm using my drill press. It's not powered on. I've got the safety off on it. Uh, so basically there's no way of turning this on. I'm going to be turning it by hand and using it as the tapping wrench uh, instead of the actual tap wrench that I have uh, because it's first of all much uh, more accurate and much more uh, likely to give me a proper thread and angle on this uh, ball than it is doing it by hand. Now if you don't have this equipment, do it by hand by all means. Uh, like I said, I'm turning the pulleys with by hand and I'll probably uh, be turning the chuck by hand as well uh, to get this to thread in. So we're going to go down on it like that and then we're going to start turning. Now I do have some uh, tap magic uh, oil cutting fluid so I'm going to use some in there. Put a little bit on there and let's go. And that just seems to be singing through that, no problem. I said I'm using the taper bit and I think I've gone all the way through at that point. Yep. I'm going to use the um, plug bit next. Yeah, I think I got all the way through on that. I'm going to use a plug bit next and uh, then I'm going to use the uh, bottom tap. So I'm going to use a, a plug tap next and then I'm going to use a bottom tap. So let's get this off. Well, I wasn't expecting that to happen, but I can always re-secure it. And I think I've got a good um, thread on that at this point. I will use the bottom tap, but I don't think it's really necessary at this point. I think it'll just go in without issue anyway. I think I'm all the way through that. So uh, at this point, we're ready to uh, put the Zerk fitting on there. So that's what we're going to do next. Uh, I'll try the bottom tap, but at this point I realized I didn't really need it. I just didn't know how much clearance I had. Let's try the bottom tap just by hand. Goes all the way through without any issue at all. So I didn't really need the bottom tap, but I'm glad I have it. I may need it in another occasion. So um, we've got good thread on there. I'm going to blow that out with a little bit of compressed air. Uh, get all the little pieces of metal out of there. And then I'm going to put the Zerk fitting on next. Well, I don't know if you can see how nicely that turned out, but it turned out really, really nice. And uh, now ready for the Zerk fitting. So uh, I'm going to uh, attach the Zerk fitting using my uh, wrench, tighten it down, and then I'm going to lube it and see what happens after that. And I'll show all that as I do it. All right, we're ready to thread that on there. I'm going to use some Teflon tape around the threads uh, and probably cut the excess off and uh, put that back in there, but that's optional. You don't need to do that. Uh, just thread it on there, tighten it down with your wrench. And uh, after that, uh, I've, after I finish doing that, I'm going to pump the uh, grease into it and show you it uh, flowing through the ball joint. Okay, here we go with the pipe thread uh, tape, and I'm just gonna put it over top and basically wind it in, over the uh, uh, fitting in the direction of, of uh, travel. In other words, uh, clockwise, the way it's gonna be uh, tightening down. So basically hold it down like that, give it a couple turns, you know, and uh, I'm going to cut the excess off with my knife 
And the reason I'm doing that is to seal it and make it uh, nice and uh, tight and uh, so that uh, dirt and water don't get in there. All right, there's the pipe fitted all nicely attached uh, or put on that uh, fitting. And uh, you know, it's up to you whether you do that or not. It's an optional step. Uh, basically, we're gonna thread it in here. And uh, then I'm going to get my grease gun and lube this uh, joint right up so that it's uh, full of grease. And uh, you can see that coming through. So there it is, uh, hand tight. I'm gonna wrench that down and then uh, we'll, I'll show you how it works. All right, got my grease gun here. I've got my grease gun here. I'm just gonna attach the bit. I, I loosen the nozzle here a little bit counterclockwise, putting it on, and then I'm gonna snug it down, going clockwise with it. And at which point it's like locked on there. It's not gonna come off. Uh, and then I'm gonna commence uh, uh, pumping this up, but I'm gonna put it in my vise so you can see the grease coming out of the top. I'm ready to start pumping grease into this. Uh, after I'm done, I will put the protective rubber boot back on, but right now it's off. I just want to show you it, and I want to see it myself coming up over the top uh, while being filled from the bottom. So let's start pumping it in. And there it is. I can already see it starting to sneak out there. As you can see, that's beautiful. And I notice it's coming out of one, two, three, four places. Yeah, excellent. Um, so basically, as I keep pumping, more grease will go in. I'm gonna stop pumping here and uh, put the boot back on here and fill the boot and, uh, until, well, keep pumping grease into it until the, the actual uh, boot expands. And then I'll know that there's lots of grease in the, the ball joint. So um, maybe I'll show you that. We'll go for there from ne uh, next. So I'm just gonna pick this grease, push it down nice and even all the way around here, like so. And uh, I'm gonna put the boot back on and then finish uh, filling it full of grease. I've got the boot back on there and now I'm just gonna fill it up full of grease and it should expand, so let's do that. Pumping right now. And I can see it's starting to increase in size there. Beautiful. I don't want to put too much in there. A little bit more should do. There we go. Uh, I want to actually have it have a little bit of room to expand in there, not burst out of it. Like so. Okay, so there it is full. I'm going to uh, disconnect it here and show you the difference between that one and the original, which is, well, I've got two, so I got one I have not modified yet. So I'm gonna get that off of there. And yes, your hands will get greasy. There we have a comparison of the two uh, actual ball joints. The one on the left, has not been modified yet, and the one on the right has been fully modified with the grease, grease fitting, the zerk fitting here, and uh, the actual grease inside the uh, rubber boot. As you can see right there, it's a little spongy, but I know it's full of grease, that's great. And uh, I will be doing the same to the other one. Uh, one thing to note also, as you can see, I got the 45 degree angle there on purpose. Uh, when this goes, let's say it's the uh, driver's side, uh, the wheel will be inside as such. So uh, it was a lot more clearance, of course, but the wheel will, will be like this. So make sure when you mount this on the car that you have the, the grease fitting uh, facing in the right direction so you can put the actual uh, grease gun on it uh, while the wheel is still on the car. So I will be making a video on how to mount these on the uh, uh, Hyundai Santa Fe 2003 and that will cover the 2001 to 2006 models because they have the same ball joints in all of those. So uh, that's it for 
this modification, now I'm going to get on to this one and do the exact same uh, to this one as I did to this one. Remember, all this stuff will be in the video description uh, from Amazon if you wish to purchase it online. That's it for my video. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you like this video and it helped you out in some way, do me a favor, click on the like button right down here. And uh, you know, if you wish to subscribe to my channel, just click on this link up here. And that should subscribe you to the, the uh, Richard Lloyd channel or Richard Lloyd USA channel. Um, okay, again, thank you very much for your time and watching.